loving God, if our good works have become tainted with prideful intentions, may they appear as filthy rags in your sight. Forgive us our pride, our complacency, our self-reliance, our greed, and our selfishness. Some of us, O oh God, come this evening still grieving a loss in our lives, still attempting to quiet the stormy seas of our souls. We pray for all those, O oh God, who struggle with the results of trauma. May their valley of troubles become doors of hope. Remove the shock, remove the horror and the pain. Eliminate their terror, their torment, and their shame. Erase the hopelessness that always accompanies trauma. Gather, O oh God, those who suffer into your everlasting arms. Give them grace, mercy, peace, and comfort. Heal their brains from the shock and terror. Restore their balance with healing and restoration. Sing to them, O oh God. Sing to them your love song. Like a mother sings enduring songs to her babies and grant them a new vision of hope and a new beginning. For we lift this prayer in the name of the one who placed this prayer upon our lips. Our, our Father, Father, who art Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. scripture this evening is from um, the Gospel of John, the third chapter. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, what is born of the flesh is flesh and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. May God bless the reading of God's holy word. I think we make a mistake a lot of times when we hear that passage of Scripture read and focus just specifically on the fact where Jesus says you've got to be born again, you've got to be born anew or born from above. It strikes me that we have to focus a little bit on Nicodemus and who he was. Scripture says he's a ruler or leader of the Jews. He is a Pharisee rabbi, which means that at the time of Jesus, Nicodemus was what was seen as the new breed of people the new breed of Jewish leaders. 
initially most of the Jews lived in Jerusalem and so people would go to the temple for their relationships with God and they would see the priests but now everybody doesn't still live in Jerusalem they started moving out to the villages and the towns and to the countryside and so they can't get to the temple on a regular basis so this new breed has arisen they're not priests anymore they're rabbis they're teachers and they have left the, synagogue, the, the temple they've left the temple and gone out to the smaller towns and built synagogues so Nicodemus is one of those he is one of those who would have been seen maybe 15, 20, 30 years earlier as the new breed. But now there is an even newer breed who is come to be. Jesus, and you can make very strong argument that Jesus was a Pharisee rabbi as well. Jesus goes to the temple, I mean goes to the synagogue, and he teaches in the synagogue, but it's only once. And then he leaves the synagogue and starts to go to where the people are. He's no longer teaching in the synagogue. He's out going to where the people are, in the different villages, in the different towns. He's preaching on the hillside. He's preaching by the lakeside. He's preaching from boats. He's preaching wherever he finds people, teaching them there. So he is an even newer breed. Now Nicodemus comes to Jesus, and what he's doing is he's asking Jesus, how do I become new again? And that's when Jesus gives him the admonition to be born from above. I want you to hold that for just a little bit. There's this young girl I knew named Leah. And Leah was a teenager. Um, she fell in love with a boy when they were in high school. Leah and her boyfriend were a couple from day one. Everybody knew they were a couple. And it was kind of tumultuous. Um, the boy was kind of jealous and kind of uh, um, had poor self-esteem. And finally Leah was just fed up and Leah just broke up with him. And word got out that Leah was no longer dating this guy. And so less than two weeks after she breaks up with this guy, the most popular boy in the senior class, attractive young man, bright young man, uh, everybody likes this guy. He's just a great young guy. And he approaches Leah and asks Leah to be his date to the senior prom. And Leah said no. Now this is a nice young man, but he can't believe that anybody's turning him down. Because he's, he's pretty hot stuff. And he asks, not out of the ordinary, he just says, why not? And Leah's response to him was, I haven't even gotten myself back yet. I haven't even gotten myself back. When a lot of you know my mother-in-law, Edna, when she was alive. Um, Edna was in the latter stages of her life. Um, she had Parkinson's, she was falling a lot, the memory wasn't what it used to be. She drunk a lot, <laughs> you know. Um, but we thought she was still pretty much there mentally, and yet one time I remember she told me that when she looked in the mirror, she didn't recognize herself. My initial thought was that she was starting to lose it mentally. And so I was trying to find out what she meant by that, and she she had me stand in the mirror with her. And so I'm standing there, you know, she's down here. <laughs> We're standing there in the mirror. And she said to me, she said, that woman next to you, that's not me. And then she said, I'm a little girl who climbs trees. I'm not that old woman. What she really wanted was to get herself back. Those of us who have struggled with maybe heart attacks or, or strokes or Parkinson's or any number of debilitating diseases, what we really want is to get ourselves back. If those of us who are alcoholics or addicts, we, we look at our lives and we 
are kind of ashamed of, of who we are, what we've become. And we look at our lives, we think it's a real mess. And what we really want is to get ourselves back. I think sometimes about, you know, we have this, we have a big race problem in our country. And you have somebody like Ahmaud Arbery, who went for a run and gets killed, murdered by guys because he was a black man running. And you think of how many little black children in our world, when they're little, are running in parks and around the schoolyards and in their houses and neighborhood. They run, they have a good time, and life is good. And then at some point in their lives, they become something that people are afraid of. And how they want to get themselves back again. Or, or you think about the LBGTQ community. When, when, when these kids are, you know, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, their gender's not a big deal. I mean, it's not a big deal what bathroom they go to. Usually, if they go with their dad, they go to the men's room. If they go with their mom, they go to the women's room. Big brother to the boys' room. And all of a sudden, they're reaching puberty, and it's a big deal. And they start looking in the mirror, and they're almost like Edna, you know? They don't see the person in the mirror that they think they really are. And they would really like to get themselves back. When Nicodemus approached Jesus, I really think he was trying to get himself back again. He was a person who had had a close relationship with God. He was a person who was seen as maybe a rebel, as, as one who was on the cutting edge. And now all of a sudden life is kind of passing by and he wants to get himself back. He wants to be new again. And I know it's possible to be new again. I do. And, and, and I think it's, to me, it's pretty simple. The first is we have to forgive, accept our, the forgiveness of God, even when we can't forgive ourselves. We have to believe in God's promises, even when we can't believe in ourselves. And we have to accept that there's a future, even if our feet feel paralyzed. And that's when we can become new again. Not the same people we were, I guess, but better than we were. You can choose your own metaphor. Being born from above, being born anew, being born again, being born of the Spirit. Choose your own metaphor. <laughs> it's just important to realize that we can be new and get ourselves back. Let us pray. Lord God, come to us wherever we are in whatever conditions we're in. Accept us as we are. Comfort us when we need the comfort. Guide us when we need guidance. Strengthen us when we need courage. And then let's be on about it, God. Let's get on with our lives and let's live life to the fullest in the joy, in the peace, and the promise that always comes when we're close to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. And now may the Lord be with you. And with with you also. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord give his countenance upon you and give you peace.
Hallelujah. Amen.